I'm gonna have to report you to the Better Business Bureau out here trying to take my eye out. What are you talking about? Flicking up this resin. Are you giving in the eye or are you giving in the hand? I think I'm gonna take my hand. Either way, you're gonna get one. <laughs> <laughs> What you do? Intro. Welcome back to Street Bandito. This is Tim. Today we are working on Connie, Speed Academy's Celica. And before we start today's episode, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and slap that bell to stay in tune with everything we do. Okay, so we left off last time with the, uh, the roof just being uh, freshly primed. Yeah. So obviously it's white, it's primed, good to go. We cracked it off. You can see the inside of it now. Nice raw carbon. Um, I did just scratch this. I realized that I can, well, I guess my ring is carbon. He was getting a little carried away, slapping away this piece of resin on the edge. for Dave. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter because we're gonna, this wants to stab me. It doesn't matter uh, because we're gonna sand it and uh, satin clear it, I think is what we did last time. Mm -hmm. We're gonna keep down reflections on the interior, even though the roof's probably not gonna get that much light reflecting off of it. But. So now that we have this off, we just gotta clear it and then bond it onto Connie's metal roof. Okay, so if you don't know, we have a DIY composites competition going on right now. We sell these DIY kits on industrygarage.com and a bunch of people have been uh, hitting me up saying like, oh, they really wanna join the competition, but they don't know if they have enough time. So we are gonna extend it until the end of March. So how many days are in March? 30, 31? You gotta do the knuckle test. 31. I was born in March, so I should probably do it. <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah, so March 31st is gonna actually be the new deadline. If you've already bought a kit, we're gonna shoot out an email that will explain the new rules and everything. The only rule that's really changing is the deadline. So now you have an extra month. So if you have any cool projects or you wanna skin something or any type of composite stuff, you can get a carbon, carbon Kevlar, or just Kevlar kit. Hit up our website, it doesn't need to be a large kit, but uh, we're gonna extend everything and uh, you get these sick prizes if you win. So you can see Ryan has uh, spent probably like two hours grinding away all of the old carbon roof that we spent all that time making. <laughs> so the car is completely covered in uh, carbon dust. It's that black lung juice. Mm. So once we clear the roof, uh, we will be ready to bond that one on. Um, we are waiting for another shipment of DP420 to bond it on. It's the best stuff to bond bare metal. 3M sponsors. Uh, but so other than that, we've epoxied on the TRD flares, and we've been building off of those to make the John Spool flares. Um, they're not that similar, so we're really only using the height that the flares wheel arch comes to as a reference so we know where to build these off of so it fits Dave's suspension. So this is the first flare that's done. So it needs to be blocked down again and primed again and the inside lip finished a little bit. But you get the general shape. It mimics John's flare pretty well. As I'm doing this, I'm sending photos back to him and to Dave to make sure everybody's cool with the design and everything and we're all uh, go from here. That's good communication. Applause. Or communication is key. <laughs> One thing that we still have not fully figured out yet is uh, if we're gonna go with uh, hidden hardware. It kind of goes more with John's render. He didn't have any hardware visible. So we can make an inner lip that has hardware on the back half of it. So I wanna make sure that there's enough room to actually uh, to mount it without the wheel. If we, you know, on, a, on a flare like this, the wheel's gonna come up pretty high, pretty close to the top of the flare, especially if you're running really like tight suspension really low. Um, so we'll have to play around with it. I'll make sure everybody's cool with it, but we'll uh, figure that out a little bit later on. At least now I have the main shape. If I need to Dremel out little bolt reliefs, that's not a big deal. Um, but how did I get to this? That's the magic. Crazy shape. Um, so like I said, we used the TRD flares as kind of like a base, but this has all been reshaped. Like none of this doesn't, doesn't use any of the like this is not the TRD shape, this is not the TRD shape. I literally just used the, the only thing that's similar is the height of the wheel arch is the same spot. So I know that Dave's suspension setup will work with this flare. But basically what I did was make a foam buck. And I'll make a bunch of foam pieces. Don't need to necessarily be too accurate. They're just kind of blobby and uh, 
is actually cut out of Divinacell foam, which is like a really uh, tight foam structure. So even when you sand, it doesn't sand too, too fast. So if you're mudding it and you get down to the foam, it's not the end of the world. It's not gonna just blast through it like spray foam or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I make a carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Okay. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Baller. Carbon fiber. Um, <laughs> okay, this shit's like my head. But yeah, I made a carbon fiber version of the actual wheel arch. Um, because John's uh, renders have an actual body line here, whereas the TRD ones just rolled over. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a carbon fiber version of this, so I can see as soon as I sand back down to it. And then I essentially just filled all of this, uh, the shape with uh, body filler. So there's like an inch thick of body filler throughout this whole thing. Um, and then uh, John's render has like this little taper up here, this little like lip that runs up this direction. So what we did was I actually ran a thing of five minute epoxy and then I Ryan cut like a oh thousand of these little God. 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter squares and I put them down. They look like that cereal, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah. Or the Graham, oh, remember Graham, Graham Cracker? Graham. What is it called? You know what I'm talking I about. I do know what you're talking about. Damn, that used to be my stuff. I want to say Teddy Grahams, but those are the fucking. It's the teddy bear joints. God, what are they called? Damn it, dude. Yeah, so I glued these all the <laughs> way around. And then I uh, ran some tape in here and did a really tight, I cut a spreader in half, did a really tight uh, two layers of body filler in there. And a day and a half, two days of sanding and doing all this and I uh, have a flare. One of four. Just going back and forth between the render and stuff like that. John, luckily he sent us like videos of it, like 3D, like spinning around. He sent me the file for it and a whole bunch of color render photos and just like the regular like grayscale photos too. So it's been super useful. Like saying he had uh, he had the blender file and everything for it, which we could have, we were talking to, even some people commented on the last video, like there's, there are ways to build this out into like an actual 3D object that we can then make cheat code to cut these out of foam or out of MDF or something like that. Yeah. But um, we're not that fast at that stuff yet, so. The amount of time it would take for me to like get this to a good point and then probably have like four or five days of like cutting and ruining materials and stuff like that. Um, I've just, you know, grown up in a body shop. So I've made my E46 flares just like this. I made my S2000 flares like this. Lotus the flares. Lotus flares. So I even gave him a little, flares. gave him a little insight of that. I had some hidden footage back from 2016. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I've just done this and then Making the second side is gonna take twice as long because you gotta make sure everything is exactly the same as this side. So a lot of running back and forth with the caliper. This side was just pretty, it's, this is the more fun side, just doing the first one because you can kind of just look at the photo, make sure it goes all uh, the right direction. And then uh, mm -hmm. having a copy, it's really what takes time. So yeah, next steps, we're gonna be finishing off the other side, building the rears. The rear, we're actually, I've been talking to Dave, Oh, this um, we're gonna end up running this uh, running this flare a little higher. So we're actually not even gonna use any of this flare because we're gonna add, uh, we're not only gonna be making wider flares, we're also gonna be raising the arch. So the wheel arch where the actual uh, wheel is gonna contact this. These have a, a pretty good amount of rake from factory, like most old Japanese cars. 240s are the same way. Um, when you say rake, that means like clearance? Or? Well, I mean just the, the angle of the car. If, if you're if you're running stock stock fenders, and say you lower a car down to like the wheel, like the same wheel height to lip, yeah, wheel lip on the front and the rear, the car is actually gonna sit like this. Maybe not that exaggerated, mm. but Absolutely. the wheel arch in the quarter panel, you can even see it now. Like this body line right here. That body line comes below where the flare was mounting, and then this body line continues. I mean, it's at an angle, but you know, goes through the middle of the flare. Yeah. So, same thing with 240s. You look at the quarter panel here. And that's the 240s here, just yeah, doing what it do best. We actually did a bunch of work to the 240. It has a new diff seal, it has fluid in it, it's ready to rip, or ready to go back to the dyno. So like I said, this body line goes right up to the top of this wheel arch. 
and then comes through here and you got, you know, two inches there. So the rake on this isn't that crazy, but it is, the wheel arch is two inches lower in the rear. Okay. The Celica is the same way. So we're gonna try to fix that um, and actually get a lot closer to John's render. John's quarter, yeah, is probably like up, up here, which we probably can't go that far. It's got a solid rear axle. Mm -hmm. And if you go too high, you're gonna start hitting the inner frame. You're gonna have no suspension travel at all. So we're doing a kind of like middle ground where I'm gonna raise this maybe like two, two and a half, three inches where the actual flare is gonna start. And then I'm gonna raise this wheel arch one inch. So the flare itself is gonna be taller, which also uh, matches his render better, uh, but it's also gonna have a little bit more of a, uh, like you can actually read, he's gonna be able to lower the rear an inch compared to where it was before. Now that we've fixed the rake issue in the rear, we can go ahead and start uh, building our rear flares. 